Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. My name is Manik Madan and I'm currently a PGY1 resident here in the United States. There's just a sea of myths going around about USMLE and I get messages from thousands of students all around the world regarding these myths. So I thought, you know what, I should just discuss all these in one video and break them down so that nobody ever gets confused about these. Number one myth. All you need to match into residency is high scores. This is somewhat true, but not like fully true. And here's how I would explain it. When we are thinking about non-competitive specialties such as internal medicine, family medicine, pediatrics, here you don't have the best of the bunch of the medical students worldwide competing for them. The people with the best scores, the people with the best electives are not competing for them. So that makes the threshold to match into these specialties drop down. So if you have high scores, you might not have anything else on the CV and you can really match with those high scores, let's say 250, 260 plus. And that is completely true. But even if you match, what you are compromising on is getting interviews from really good competitive university programs because there it's not only high scores that matter within these specialties, it's also your CV, your electives, your research. Let's say if you want to go into Stanford and you want to do internal medicine, you need a lot more than just scores to get into that without these CV and other experiences. It is going to be very hard for you to match into really competitive programs in non-competitive specialities. Now, secondly, this myth is completely false provided you are applying to a competitive speciality such as surgery, plastic surgery, neurosurgery, and vascular surgery. In all these specialties, most of the students that are applying, even the American medical graduates, have very high scores. They have tons of research on their side. And you have to understand that because the pool itself is so competitive, the threshold for matching into the specialties increases. And so the mentality that all you need is high scores to match into the specialties doesn't come true. So my final answer to this question, try to match in one attempt and make sure that when you are applying in that one attempt, you have done your best to create the perfect CV, the best scores, and you're providing your best self. Let's say you consider that high scores is all you need, right? And you fail that decreases the chances of you matching in further attempts because other programs are like oh this person did not match in their first try maybe there's something wrong with them and so a lot of program directors wouldn't even rank you or rank you lower when you are applying make sure you apply with the best face for forward which means a complete application in terms of quantity and quality go overboard in terms of your entire application second question that I usually get is it is impossible to match into competitive speciality for international medical graduates. So this myth is false. What happens with competitive specialties such as neurosurgery, surgery, plastic surgery, vascular surgery is that these specialities have a higher threshold of matching as I've told you in the previous answer because the pool itself which is applying to these specialities is far better in terms of their scores and CV. And this is what makes it harder to match into these specialities, not particularly impossible to match here. Why is it considered impossible for most IMGs? Well, the reason is because most IMGs do not have significant research on their CV. What I mean by significant research is proper research experience, either in terms of research electives or research fellowships. Research fellowships and electives, these these experiences where you apply to certain programs in the US, let's say John Hopkins, and there you go to that certain, let's say vascular surgery is the specialty that you want to match into. You go and do research in that specialty under a supervisor. Because of this, you're going to generate very powerful LORs. You're going to get this stamp of approval from a big institution. Number three, you're going to have research on your side, which makes you more competitive than other IMGs. So that is how basically you match into these competitive specialities is by doing research. Even American grads who are applying to these specialities have research fellowships under their hat. So if you think that you're an IMG with all your problems such as cultural acclimatization, language issues, and you can match into these specialities without research fellowships provided that the American grads have it, then you couldn't be more wrong. It is completely possible to match into these specialities given you have research fellowship so that that makes you at power with these applicants. Third myth that I hear is research is 
very important for USMLE. This is very misleading. You don't need research specifically if you want to apply for non-computer specialties such as internal medicine, family medicine, pediatrics. You don't need much research for these specialties because the pool itself here isn't as competitive as computer specialties. Even the NRMP data, if you look at that, research did not make a significant difference in applicants matching into these specialties. However, when you're applying to competitive specialties, it does make a difference because the applicant pool there is highly competitive. So you need research under your belt to match into these specialties. That's when it becomes super important. Otherwise, it is not super important as people would say. A bit of my perspective on this is if you get research opportunities and even though you're applying to non-competitive specialties, try to do research because that would again make you a more of a competitive applicant and open doors to more competitive programs in that specialty, even though that specialty is non-competitive. So what I mean is instead of matching into a community hospital, you can match into a university hospital with research and low scores. The myth that I get is USMLE is very expensive. Provided it does take about $20,000 on an average to match into a specialty, that $20,000 isn't taken out of your pocket in just one go. It's a longitudinal process. So when you give your USMLE step one, when you pay your $1,000, you have six more months to gather the rest of the $1,000 for step two CK. And then you have more time to get money for electives. It is much more of a longitudinal pay over two years or three years. When you get into your first year of residency, you make on an average $64,000. I make that and I was easily able to gather back that money within the first five months of residency. So it does pay for itself. When you compare it to, let's say, some colleges in India which charge $150,000 in donation just to get into a certain specialty and then the pay itself is super low, you cannot gather that money back very fast versus USMLE, which is cheaper, number one, to get into compared to such private colleges. And secondly, pays you all that money back in the first five months if you match. So please keep that in mind. It is not the most expensive thing in the world when you compare it to other countries. The other thing that I get is now that USMLE step one is pass fail, it is no longer important. And all I should do is pass the exam. This couldn't be far from the truth because step one when you're preparing for this exam is gonna prepare you for step two and step three. And all these exams, step one, step two, step three, they follow a ladder model. The first step is step one, second step is step two, and third step is step three. If you have weak basics in step one, it becomes harder for you to make the transition to step two and step three because these rely about 60 to 70% on step one knowledge. And it's much more like you're jumping two steps at a time because step one isn't as strong. On the opposite end, if your step one is rock solid, your step one foundation is rock solid, this gives you leverage because now you have already climbed one step. You have that knowledge, it just makes the transition easier to other step. And that is why I would highly recommend that when you're preparing for step one, do not prepare for it as if it's pass fail, prepare for it as if it's numerical. And that would give you a far bigger advantage compared to other people who have the mentality that step one is pass fail, I should just pass it. The other myth, networking doesn't matter wrong 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 networking is everything i personally know people who have like super low scores like 210s 220s but because they know the right people and they have networked through the right organizations these people were able to put recommendations to different program directors for them matching into the program of their choice because in the us the word of a certain person who is high in the hierarchy of that specialty who people know is taken very seriously i know people who have very high scores but did not have a network or the CV and could not match. And I mean people here like who've scored two 70s in step one and step two because they had no qualitative aspect to it. Networking is probably the most powerful card you can play in this game. It goes far more than even scores because scores are not indicative definitely of your clinical ability because I could have stellar scores and I might not be able to even talk one word to the patient. What good is a clinician with amazing knowledge but no communication? Networking fills in the gap by saying, okay, I am an American physician. I say this person's good and I'm recommending you to other people. And I talk to other applicants who are applying in their specialty, find out organizations, be a part of those organizations. And you might meet people who are program directors in certain big programs who might be able to vouch for you in the end. Thank you. For
for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you would like me to answer or make a video upon. 